One would be the material, the optical purity, that it's a completely glistening free material. Uh, it's based from, from Santen, which have proven and uh, long-term experience uh, with these kind of material and the Acunex is excellent in this terms. The other thing, it's a proven uh, design with sharp edges, C-loop type lens, which also uh, creates a very good uh, PCO prevention in addition to its material properties. The new hybrid material is uh, a design um, which is glistening free. So we have a hydrophobic material which does not have the same problem as uh, um, other hydrophobic uh, materials in the past which create glistenings and this is the main advantage of this. The other advantage is a hydrophobic material that is glistening free. So you don't have to fear glistenings on the one hand side but you can enjoy the advantages uh, that you don't have the danger of early PCO. Another thing that is interesting um, for many of us this IOL has a blue light filter um, which might protect the macula. This is a EDRF uh, IOL which uh, gives you almost no dysphotopsia, so you're getting all the benefits of uh, the extended depth of vision, but no problems with uh, dysphotopsias as you get in some other diffractive designs. The benefit of the refractive design of that lens is that the patients don't have dysphotopsia. It really behaves like a monofocal, but they have an enlarged defocus area. And I think that is really what patients like can benefit from in their routine. I especially like this kind of segmental design because it's not as pupil dependent as other refractive designs. And if after surgery you have a shift in the pupil, even then you can rotate the IOL and then again benefit. So I like the, this design very much because it's not sensitive to uh, pupil mobility on the one hand side and to pupil decentration. On the other hand, if you look at the defocus curve, it is a real eat of lens. That means good far vision, good intermediate vision and not as good in the near but it is very close to a spherical designed IOL concerning halo and glare. The benefit of this design is uh, largely to do with the amount of light transmission, uh, which means that uh, during dark conditions that you've lost very little light, but also because uh, the uh, reading segment or the near segment uh, is limited uh, to a small area, uh, the amount of dysphotopsias uh, are also very small. At the David Apple Lab, we do a lot of laboratory studies evaluating biomaterial uh, quality. And for hydrophobic intraocular lenses, we developed an accelerating aging process, which is very controlled and has been done in, in hundreds and thousands of lenses from all companies. And it's a very strict regime. Uh, the lenses will be kind of heated in a certain setup, uh, then uh, cooled down to body temperature. And then we have a specific image analysis system looking at the glistenings, the size, the number, and everything. And in this uh, comparative study, we compared the Acunex to the gold standard uh, like the uh, uh, Bausch & Lomb uh, lens or the Vivinex from Hoya, all these lenses or the Technus that have been proven to be glistening free and it's exactly the same quality. They had zero to one or two glistenings per square millimeter which is, which is uh, the best you can get in terms of uh, uh, glistening tolerance and uh, the study has proven that with the new Acunex uh, material uh, you will not have uh, a long-standing uh, issue of glistening. What we see so far is that the lens is very rotational stable, comparable to the Comfort model that is a four-point fixation. Even this one only has a C-loop. The patients are extremely happy. The optical quality is very good and the lens also centers itself really well, so the near segment works sufficiently. The Aconex material has put out a claim on the no gliss material. Now, in order to prove this, we have examined these lenses under clinical conditions, taking standardized photographs and looking for glistenings within the IOL body and the IOL material. By testing the Aconex clinically, 
several factors are important when changing to a new lens or new lens material. These factors do include refractive stability and predictability, meaning does the lens undergo major changes once implanted in the eye and we, do we see changes of refraction in the early postoperative period. Once implanted in the back, the lens remains in a stable position, which is a very important by considering this a platform lens also prone for future or already existing future designs, meaning multifocality, toricity and other optical features that are always wanted to be placed on a new platform design like the Acunex. So we uh, conducted the first in-man study of the Acunex Vario Extended Depth of Focus IOL. Uh, we implanted uh, 20 patients uh, bilaterally with the Acunex Vario lens and we checked the patients for visual outcomes as well as uh, visual disturbances and refractive outcomes. So in terms of uh, visual outcomes, uh, all of the patients manifested with excellent uh, distance and intermediate visual acuity. And surprisingly, for an extended depth of focus lens with only 1.5 diopters adds, the patients also had excellent uh, near visual acuity. In terms of uh, refractive outcomes, our patients got very good refractive outcomes, uh, especially when we adjusted for uh, the A constant, uh, the patients had very good uncorrected distance visual acuity and intermediate visual acuity as well. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, visual disturbances, uh, we did not have any patient complain of uh, visual dysphotopsias, both positive and negative. Uh, and when we questioned the patients directly, specifically for glare, halos, and uh, such visual disturbances, uh, the patients generally were very happy with the results. Uh, so, in general, when we asked the patients how satisfied they, they were with their vision, uh, they reported excellent distance and intermediate visual acuity, as well as uh, reading uh, uh, ability. And uh, when we uh, plotted the, the focus curves, uh, the Acunex Vario lens demonstrated the expected uh, extended depth of focus curve, uh, giving us continuous uh, vision at different distances. So in general, we were very happy with the results and I'm sure the patients will be very happy with this lens. The results have shown that uh, within the first week, we are getting defocus curves which are very similar to the uh, defocus curves that we are getting with the hydrophilic version of this lens and uh, hence we are very confident in its ability to work. The uh, vision um, improves uh, uh, very quickly and we are seeing uh, defocus curves in keeping with the low ad uh, um, um, segmental bifocal um, within the first week of uh, analysis. Uh, when we uh, plotted the, the focus curves, uh, the Acunex Vario lens demonstrated the expected uh, extended depth of focus curve, uh, giving us continuous uh, vision at different distances. So in general, we were very happy with the results and I'm sure the patients will be very happy with this lens. After a month's follow-up uh, with these uh, patients, uh, they're extremely happy. The distance vision has settled down and um, is very accurate uh, based on the biometry that we've calculated. And uh, they're not complaining of any dysphotopsias. And as we'd expect uh, with any EDRF lens, they're getting uh, excellent intermediate and uh, reasonable near. The patients are very happy uh, because we can fulfill their needs. If you use the blended vision or Düsseldorf formula, you have the big advantage they can see far, intermediate and near without glasses. And due to the blue light filter, they don't have a chromatic aberration. So uh, usually they see the colors as of before surgery. I think that is, for some it is important if you have, for example, a designer or uh, social media agents uh, or photographers they like to have a, a blue light filter. And once again, um, the biggest advantage is you don't have photopic phenomena or halo and glare. And those patients, we extensively ask with a questionnaire our first patients and they are 
don't have more photopic phenomena than our employees of young age uh, as a control group. First of all, the Acnex variable is very easy to put it into the cartridge and from there into the injector. I think this is very important uh, because usually I'm a little bit lazy, so my nurse does it. Uh, I can delegate this maneuver. It doesn't, doesn't have to interrupt my surgery. Second, you can dock on very easily or if you have an incision more than 2.2 millimeters, you can even insert the cartridge uh, into the eye. Next, uh, third advantage is that it unfolds uh, slowly in a very controlled, not explosive way, but the arms of the C-loop, the haptics, they're not too sticky on the lens. That means it doesn't take too long to unfold uh, after it's inserted in the capsular bag. So given the uh, ability of the Acunex Bio lens to give someone um, a wide range of vision, and given the very uh, insignificant amounts of visual disturbances uh, that the patients experience with the Acunex Bio lens, uh, we believe that this uh, lens uh, is suitable for all manner of patients. So if a patient, like many patients, uh, want to be able to see distance uh, and they want to have an active lifestyle and they use a lot of gadgets, this lens would be perfect for them. Uh, additionally, patients who uh, have had some previous uh, LASIK or corneal refractive surgery, I think would benefit from this lens because uh, the there's a very small amount of uh, visual disturbances and they get continuous range of vision. Any patient that could have a second surgical procedure like a DMAC or stuff, that is definitely the lens to go for because you have the enhanced depths of focus, they have like newspaper reading ability, computer ability, but they don't have any side effects. So it behaves like a monofocal, but gives the patient a wider range to read. So this material in contrast to its precursors, is now containing a blue light filter, giving the lens a yellow tint. These blue filter lenses have become very common in the IOL industry for patients that are at risk for developing, or I should better say, for worsening on macular degeneration. By reducing the amount of UV and the hard blue light that may enter the macula and contribute to macular degenerative changes. I mainly use uh, this new Acunex Vario IOL for my presbyopic patients uh, and depending if they want to see far and intermediate distance without glasses, I do both uh, target for emetropia. If they want also to read a book or read a newspaper. Uh, I use the Düsseldorf formula we developed six years ago uh, with the Oculentis Comfort IOL. Um, so we do the same, the dominant eye for far vision and the near dominant eye, uh, mine, we target minus 1.5 uh, diopters for slight myopia. So that gives um, those patients a high spectacle freedom. Only one thing they are not able to read is very small print. So that's what you have to inform your patients. But the good thing is, and this differentiates, differentiates this IOL design from other diffractive IOL designs, you don't have to fear halo and glare.